Hi, I'm Samantha. I've been a registered nurse since 2009, working in mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC. I'm maternal newborn nursing certified, and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, as well as perinatal bereavement. Cord blood banking involves collecting and storing blood from your baby's umbilical cord for future use. But what can cord blood really be used for anyway? And what do you need to know before deciding to store your baby's cord blood? Let's explore cord blood banking and whether you should consider it when giving birth to your baby. When a pregnancy starts, the placenta implants into the side of the uterus. This is an organ that will provide oxygen and nutrients to your baby. It also removes waste products from your baby's blood. The baby is attached to the placenta via the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is attached to your baby's stomach. After birth, when the umbilical cord falls off, this helps create your baby's belly button. The umbilical cord has blood vessels which help carry the nutrients and waste to and from your baby. Inside this cord at birth is nutrient-rich blood left over from your pregnancy. This blood is also known as cord blood. The reason why people save cord blood is to have access to the hematopoietic stem cells in the blood. Most cells are only able to make copies of themselves. This means a skin cell can only become a skin cell. Stem cells are very special because they can become many different types of mature blood cells. These include white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Stem cells can also be found in the bone marrow of children and adults. However, collection of bone marrow is a procedure that can be expensive and painful. Cord blood is an easy, non-invasive way to get a rich supply of stem cells for future use. Due to the unique properties of the stem cells in cord blood, there are a variety of uses for cord blood. Currently, the FDA has approved the use of stem cells in the treatment of almost 80 different types of diseases. These include diseases of the immune system, metabolic disorders, neurologic disorders, genetic disorders, anemias, and even orthopedic repairs. Stem cells have also been used in the treatment of certain types of cancer, including leukemia and lymphoma. Stem cells can be used as the primary form of treatment for a disease, or they can be used after other treatments have failed. Current research is looking into the use of stem cells to treat conditions like cerebral palsy, autism, and Alzheimer's disease. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about the pros of storing cord blood. The first pro of storing cord blood is that cord blood and stem cells can be used to treat a variety of diseases and illnesses. This means they could save the lives of your child or other members of your family. Stem cells from cord blood are better tolerated by your baby because it genetically matches them. Since family members are often genetically similar, cord blood stem cells from a family member are usually also well tolerated. Another pro for storing cord blood is that over the years, the number of therapies stem cells can be used for and the rates of success for these treatments has grown. In 10 or 20 more years, the cord blood may be able to be used to treat many more diseases than are currently identified. In addition to diseases, stem cells from cord blood may also be able to be used in medical procedures and surgeries to improve the outcomes. The final pro of storing cord blood is that collecting stem cells from cord blood is easy and painless since the collection takes place at birth from the cord. Cord blood collection usually takes place after your baby has been delivered. Smaller vials are obtained by inserting a needle into the already detached cord and withdrawing the cord blood that's needed. The collection of larger blood bags usually happens while the placenta is still attached to the uterus. 
One of the biggest cons of storing cord blood is cost. Usually there is an initial upfront cost to collect, test, and process your cord blood. This ranges in price, but is usually a couple thousand dollars. After that, there is still a yearly storage fee that can be up to a couple hundred dollars per year. This brings us to our next con of storing cord blood. For all the money you may spend to store your baby's cord blood, your baby may never need to use the cord blood. Not needing to use your baby's cord blood is the outcome we all want. However, that still leaves an expensive bill for an unused resource. Everyone's budget is different, so evaluating this cost is important. You should be reviewing the short-term financial impacts as well as the long-term impacts. Finally, our last con of storing cord blood is that the cord blood and stem cells cannot be used to treat every disease or every condition. Also, the treatments can fail or not work. These are important considerations when deciding whether or not to store your baby's cord blood. There are two types of places you can store your cord blood. The first and most common is a private cord blood storage bank. There are many options to choose from and often your healthcare provider may recommend one to you. When storing your cord blood in one of these facilities, your cord blood is for you and your family alone. No one else can use it and you always have access and control over it. The other option is a public cord blood bank. The cord blood stored in these facilities is for public use, including research. There are no storage fees associated with this type of cord blood banking, but there may be a fee charged to you by the hospital to collect the cord blood. Also, your cord blood is no longer yours alone. In fact, in the future, if you need to use the cord blood, it most likely will not be available to you. However, another donor's cord blood may be. Most parents who choose to donate to a public cord blood bank do so because they want to help others. Cord blood that is stored in public facilities is much more likely to be used to help a sick child. Blood that is no longer needed or wanted in a private facility is usually thrown away. Cord blood banking can be beneficial to the health of your baby in the future, but it can also be very costly. I hope this has explained what cord blood banking is and helped you make a decision on whether this is right for your family. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at the Maternity Mentor.